Hello students. Today we are going to continue with the second part of our class 8 chapter physical and chemical changes. Today our main topic would be discussion on chemical changes. So let us begin. So what is chemical change? You know that around you a lot of changes takes place which are categorized into physical and chemical changes. In the first part, I have explained you about the different kinds of physical changes that take place around us, like boiling, evaporation, condensation, and so on. When we talk about chemical changes, if you know the various processes like digestion of food or the cooking of food, all those can be categorized as a chemical change. So a chemical change is one in which one or more chemicals come together to form one or more new chemicals. So chemicals are coming together to form more chemicals or different kinds of chemicals. And or the product after we do a chemical change are such products which cannot be brought back to the original form again. So generally it is irreversible kind of a reaction means the substance, the starting substance cannot be got back from the final substance by simple conditions at least. And you also know that reactants, the things in a chemical reaction which take uh, part the chem in a chemical reaction, the starting chemicals are also called the reactants and the finished product, the final output of a chemical reaction or the final chemical of a chemical reaction is called as the product. So in a day to day life you will see different kinds of reactions are there which are actually the chemical reaction. So you can see like respiration. You know that the process of respiration which takes place in the human body involves the presence of oxygen. If we write the equation it says that the food that we eat contains glucose plus the oxygen that we take from the environment breaks into carbon dioxide and water vapor plus a lot of energy to help us do our work. So in this process when we are respiring or when we are taking in oxygen and the glucose is broken down into carbon dioxide, water vapor and energy, it is a chemical process because that cannot be returned back to the food that we had consumed. Similarly, the another process which happens naturally and you know that the plants, they prepare the food by the process of photosynthesis in that the carbon dioxide plus the water and the light energy is needed, that is the sunlight is needed and also the green plants are having chlorophyll which trap the light energy. They produce the glucose plus the oxygen. So photosynthesis is again a chemical change which is happening in the plants and they are giving out oxygen which is very essential for the humankind. And light is also needed so light is a form of energy so in carbon uh, like in respiration we are giving out energy so energy in the form of heat we don't produce light obviously you know that in respiration but we produce heat similarly here light energy is used so you will be seeing that all the chemical reactions that are happening around they either take energy in form of heat light or sometimes there is a use of a catalyst a catalyst is something which generally is useful for fastening the reaction which helps the reaction to happen first like in our body also we have catalyst which we call as biocatalyst because they are found in our living body and biocatalyst is the other name for enzymes and all these vital chemical reactions that happen in the body let it be outside the body like cooking happens outside but digestion happens inside the body all these need some flow of different sorts of energy like to cook food we need heat energy and to similarly when we are respiring I told we are giving out heat energy we are get, uh, giving energy in the form of ATP when photosynthesis is 
happening we are using light energy so everywhere you will see there is some form of a uh, element involved when the chemical changes happening also combustion which is a very common process you know combustion means burning in simple terms so when anything is burning it is taking the help of oxygen whenever we burn we need oxygen combustion happens in the presence of oxygen and also combustion is called exothermic reaction when we say exothermic reaction it is actually the giving out of energy so heat and light energy both is seen when we burn anything or like you may be hearing the news of fire in uttarakhand forest or fire in generally in summers there is forest fires in many places so that whenever anything burns it gives out heat and light energy or if you just light a match stick you can see the heat and light energy so like we put the as in the as we put the oil so oil is a fuel so wax is a fuel wood coal kerosene all these are the fuel generally which is needed to burn anything or to do the process of combustion so we can say that fuel plus oxygen is giving us carbon dioxide water vapor and heat and light energy so combustion is another everyday process that we see around and it is categorized as a chemical change similarly during diwali you might be using crackers different kinds of uh, pool jadis etc to burn so those are nothing but the magnesium metal is generally used and when it is heating or reacting with the oxygen it forms a white ash called magnesium oxide and lot of heat and light is produced so all these are some examples of the chemical changes taking place the next chemical change that you might have noticed is rusting you might have seen a brown deposit on most of the iron particles that is nothing but the rust rust can be prevented by different ways and sometimes if the rust is in the initial stage it can also be removed but if the rust continues for a long time and the browny flaky substance which is formed may cause damage or problems in the different things which it consists of like suppose it is a uh, iron bridge which has been rusted so it may break any day and cause accident so that is also a chemical change which happens and you can put different kinds of coating on the iron material to stop rusting and also you might have heard about the formation of curd from milk that is curd is containing Uh, there is bacteria that is the uh, lactose lactobacillus which is converting the lactose in the milk to the lactic acid and the lactic acid acts on the casein it is a kind of protein which is present in the milk and it changes into the curd also curdling of milk which happens naturally at times because of the growth of bacteria in which the milk which is generally consisting of the fat protein and sugar it breaks down the protein molecules they attract each other and they form the curdles or you can say the whey w h e y whey is formed which many people drink and it has some health benefits also then the caramelization of sugar you might have seen that in our preparation of many sweets or cakes etc caramelization of sugar is helpful in that the sugar which is heated turns brown that is the caramel is formed and it gives a very nice smell in the beginning also it slowly turns black and then the sh- sugar is converted into sucrose which is again a kind of carbohydrate the sucrose breaks into the fructose and the glucose further heating decomposes them into the compounds then the smell of the caramel is due to the diacetyl which is formed that is a compound which is formed during caramelization then the next 
one chemical reaction that we are going to speak is the reaction between the iron and the sulfur. You know that iron is a dark grey metal. When it is just mixed superficially with the sulfur which is generally a yellow powder and a non-metal, you can then separate both of them using a magnet. You will see that the iron gets attracted. You can, dis can dissolve that uh, mixture of iron and sulfur in carbon disulfide which dissolves the sulfur. But what will happen when you mix iron and sulfur and heat it? It will form a new compound that is iron sulfide. This iron sulfide will have no reaction towards the bringing of the magnet or the sol forming a solution with or mixing or if you try to mix with carbon disulfide you will see no reaction in it because it is now changed into a new compound that is iron sulfide. So that is a chemical reaction. Then also I told you about the formation of dough and when we are preparing the cake or a bread, the process that happens is a chemical reaction. Simply forming the dough is not a chemical reaction, please remember, but when we make the flour, knead the flour and change it into a new compound that is gluten and through that if we add the yeast it rises above and releases the carbon dioxide thus making it ready to be baked. So that is a chemical process. Then also you see that sometimes the rotten eggs they smell a lot that is because of the hydrogen sulfide and also the bacteria from dirt they penetrate the eggshell and they act on the sulfur containing protein thus the odor of a rotten egg and that is a chemical reaction also if we speak about cooking of rice you know rice is a carbohydrate containing amylopectin and amylose which is turning into soft and fluffy on cooking and you obviously need water and heat for the rice to cook so the grains can break the carbohydrate which is present inside them thus that is also a chemical reaction so i am very sure by these examples you would have been able to understand what are the different kinds of chemical reaction there are lots and lots of reaction taking place around you which you can also try to understand what is the thing happening inside it or what is the reaction involved in it and how we can classify them into chemical and physical changes and let me just remind you one more thing that the chemical changes only lead to the chemical reaction so i would like you to cite maybe one example of a chemical change in the comments below and let us see who can answer many thank you